what's up? This is Jason Brooks from Patrol Sounds, and you're checking out Baltimore Basics. And for doing what I was doing was just to buy DJ equipment and become a DJ. That was it. But uh, the streets was very intoxicating. It was it was fun. You know, people say it's not fun, but it is. To me, it was. You know, and especially somebody like me, I'm from the suburbs for real. And then moving into the city like Baltimore, it was just like, it was so chaotic and it was just so out of control and so lawless at the time. I just loved every moment of it. But my father was, I was living with my father at the time. So he still had his turntables and his mixer and all his records. So he let me DJ on that stuff. You know, I, I didn't grow up with my father. So, you know, for years I didn't see him. I was like, yeah, I could DJ. He didn't believe me. I was strong to DJ. He was like, oh, you DJ, just keep practicing. So that slowly would pull me back more into the house. And then, but the problem my father, he had a bunch of old records. I didn't wait on old disco records. I wanted to hear my music Queen Latifah, Kid and Play, Mantronics, Run DMC. Just like, like hip hop was just like pretty much here to stay at that point. So, you know, I started buying more records again. My friend Mike, he got his 1200s. And um, my Uncle Billy, my mother's brother, he played a lot of music. But he played all funk music. That was old people music to me. I hated that stuff. Which I like it now, but like I just hated all that funkadelic and Prince. Was, that Prince guy was weird. I was like, a boy, he's a girl. I don't know what's going on with him. But, um, it was, I had a young ear. I was just infatuated with hip hop. So my little, little street hustle was nice. But once again, I would go back to visit my old neighborhood and I would see Girl and Troy. Whenever they would have, they used to have parties at a rec center. And I was like, man, they always doing these parties. I just thought they just did the parties to have fun. But they were charging people to get in the parties. I remember boys boys were like three dollars, girls were two dollars, you know, something like that back then. And I was like, they making money off this stuff. So then I found out the math behind it all. They rent the rec center out for like fifty dollars and they charge everybody five dollars to get in. Back then, maybe like two hundred people, I'm like they make a lot of money. So the light bulb go off, you know, I started door parties around um, different rec centers. Mike would do parties and it was just, I would do the flyer. This was before Photoshop, so you like hand drew flyers or do graffiti. I was on the graffiti and stuff like that. And then I didn't realize it, I was a promoter. So we, we I became a, now I got the DJ thing down to the point where people I was good enough that people wanted to hear me DJ. But now I'm becoming a promoter. I'm not really realizing all this stuff. I'm 15 years old, 15, 16 years old. So the money I would make, I was spending it doing my parties. And I want my parties better than everybody. So I would have like free drinks, you know, kid drinks, you know, Kool-Aid or whatever. So where everybody else's parties like $3, I would charge $5. But you're going to get like, free sodas, you know, free Kool-Aid, a little free free snack, a little bowl of candy, which really was about 75 cents more than everything else, but I upcharged, you know, so much more, you know what I'm saying? And I've made a lot of money doing parties. I was like, all right, this is cool. This is real cool. I wasn't really rapping anymore. My brother was rapping, my younger brother. And I just really liked the way my brother rapped because he's a smart guy. And we, you know, we had two different styles. My style, I was angry rapper. I was, Arr! my brother was in the biophysics and celestials and terrestrials and rapping using onomatopoeias and all the stuff like that. But um, I started making beats. Got a little drum machine. Just making little beats on pause button and DJing at the same time. 
So now I'm producer, not realizing. Now I'm a music producer. So now I'm a DJ. I'm a club from uh, event promoter. And I'm a producer. And all that was cool. I had a lot of fun. I didn't make a nickel. But I, I mean, as far as making beats, but just being with Mike in his basement and doing little parties here and there, which, which, it was, I just had so much fun back then. My friend, my good, good, good friend who got me in house music, Charles Monroe from Hands On Radio, a lot of people call DJ Chuck. The first time I DJed in public was at a little raggedy little house party at the basement in, in a, back home on Fair Street. Uh, Fulton Avenue, somewhere around it was quite dangerous. Quite dangerous back then. <laughs> Still is dangerous down there, but you know what I mean? You, you might come in there with some shoes, but the pedal kind of shoes you had on, you might walk out barefoot. And it was right by the projects. Man. It was just, and that was tough times back then. But I, did, I still remember the first record I played. Two Live Crew, throw that D. Because I was just that kind of kid. That was the first song. Everybody was dancing. It was freaking each other. I loved it. So now I got the reaction. That That's when I was just hooked on DJ. I was like, this is awesome. I was practicing the house for so long. Then he was like, yo, go ahead on. So I was like, all right. Him and his uh, Uncle Alvin. And it was just some great memories. I just had so much fun. It was like no money really involved or nothing like that. But even on a big level, I don't think DJs are really making money like that. You know, unless you like Jam Master J or, you know, big radio DJ. And um, I don't know what happened. I just got wrapped up in a whole nother life. <laughs>